There are two sides to every story, but social media doesn't always present things that way. A local pet store is bearing the brunt of that reality. And new this morning, Becky Farr is live with both sides of an interesting story. Good morning, Becky. Tim and Alicia, a woman recently bought a kitten from RJ's World of Pets here in Minot. Eleven days after the purchase, the kitten died unexpectedly. The woman took to change.org, a petition website, to collect signatures. She wanted to try to shut down the pet store because she's unhappy with the customer service she received after her pet died. The owners of RJ said this is an isolated incident and that her petition's description isn't entirely true. Mallory Austin knew there were no returns or exchanges when she bought a calico cat from RJ's World of Pets. After the sudden death of her new kitten, she initiated an online petition drive in an attempt to close the pet store. I just shared it on Facebook, my Twitter, message to my family and had my family send it out to their friend, friends and family. And the power of social media was swift. Everything gets around so fast, even if you don't expect it to. More than 1,300 people have signed her petition in one week's time. I spoke with John Arnold, the elections director for the North Dakota Secretary of State's office, and he said that a petition like this one really has no legal pull, no matter how many people sign it. RNJ's owners say the petition stretches the truth and that since its circulation, they've received insulting and even threatening phone calls. But that doesn't change that they're in the business of selling pets to loving homes. 20 years ago, Rhonda and I started our store to do a better job, to, to uh, do a better job of taking care of the animals and taking care of the customers. Thomas said that the store has an on-call veterinarian that evaluates all animals and the store is voluntarily licensed with the USDA. There has only been one complaint ever filed with the Attorney General's Consumer Resources Office, but the sway of social media can be hard to overcome. People that I had no idea who they actually were on it and commenting just showed that social media gets around fast and that even though I am from a small town, everyone can find out about it. It's an emotionally uh, charged business sometimes and sometimes things get uh, uh, escalated quicker than you would believe and uh, sometimes people um, have the best intentions but uh, maybe not think through what they post online. With such response on the petition, I asked our Facebook followers about their experiences at the store. Chelsea said the kennels were clean and we had a very positive experience. We took our pup right to the vet and he was in perfect condition. Bev wrote, I have bought fish and guinea pigs from there. Never have had a bad experience. Then Alexius weighed in, saying, we got our first dog there last November and she's perfect. But some others weren't so positive. Karen said, both dogs were horribly sick with kennel cough and cost me hundreds of dollars in vet bills. Caitlin said, we got a kitten from them and she was so stinky and sick. And Justine wrote in and said the cages looked like they hadn't been cleaned and the dogs looked miserable. Now the owners told me that each pet situation is unique and that there's no standard way for them to deal with the issues that can come up post-purchase. As for the social media aspect of this, I talked with our tech guru Marlo Anderson who said that this episode is proof of how Twitter and Facebook amplify what used to be word of mouth, something that's now hard to stop on social media. Yeah, word of mouth can spread like wildfire Absolutely. on the internet, that's yeah, certainly very true. Very apparent there. Thank right. you very much, Becky. Well,